Well, we were walking by this booth and we saw a brain, and so uh, we definitely had to stop by and talk to Luke Stuber from Cognition. I'll get it yet. Cognition, spelled with an X, which is why I stumbled over the word. Hi, yes. Luke. How are you doing? I'm good. How about yourself? I'm doing good. So you've got a brain here, so that's nice, and you've got uh, some sort of headset. What are we looking at here? We do. So, well, the brain, of course, is a brain, which is, it's not a real brain, I'm afraid, for, for those listening. Um, what we've done with the brain is label different parts that are relevant to our work, because what we make is a brain computer interface um, for people who are profoundly impacted by a physical disability like a, a brainstem stroke for example or a spinal cord injury so even people that don't have the ability to move their eyes at all um, can use the brain computer interface to communicate um, seriously can't even move yep. their eyes and you can tap into their brain yes okay. it's kind of we the the funny example we have of this is if you hold up one hand and say this is the yes hand and one hand and say this is the no hand and then look at me straight on you can see what's happening in your peripheral vision and that's kind of the way that this works is that even if you can't move your eyes you can sort of attend to um, a signal and the, the way that that works is that we if you think of like a, an animated gif sort of thing we have images that are flashing at a certain frequency like uh, nine times a second or 18 times a second and so it creates this nice little wave in the back of the brain the occipital lobe which is processing um, visual information so when we see that curve change basically we can say oh they're looking at this button or this button. Oh, no way. It's wild. The future is cool. And we beat Elon Musk to getting it done. So we're proud of that. So what we're looking at here is a headset that does not look bigger than a, a, a VR headset. This yep. is pretty small. It's got great big sunglasses on the front for some reason, and it's white and it straps around the head. Does this, do you have to drill into your head to do this? No, this is non-invasive, right? So we have, uh, it does, it looks a lot like uh, Oculus, like Quest type thing. It looks yeah, like exactly. a VR headset. Difference being that um, it's uh, augmented reality display, so it's not totally um, opaque. Like you can see through it and see your environment, and it sort of plops a keyboard down into the world um, along with various other functions. So you can control Alexa um, through through this, turn on fans, change the channel on the TV, um, that sort of thing. No, seriously. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come, we can we can show you. Can uh, I put it on? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the really? comedy of that is always worthwhile yeah. for the audience. <laughs> yes, we can absolutely show you the um, the way that it works. We're still probably nine months away from having these available to the public, so we're here largely for feedback, which I say, so don't judge me too harshly when you see. <laughs> so I'll just pretend I'm at CS where everybody says it's coming in three months. Yeah, right, and then it never does. Yes. No, this is. But it's a real thing. It works, um, and uh, we're really proud to be to be bringing it. I mean, this is um, for a very long time the world of speech generating, uh, and and I would say disability generally has been um, relying on sort of the scraps of consumer technology, right? Um, and yeah, what we let's take an Android phone and put something on top of it, which is, which is cool in a lot of cases, but. And that's, you know, I, I sort of have this hypothetical goal that in five years, uh, personality, or excuse me, personalization should be synonymous with accessibility. Um, and in that world, then I'm so happy that Googles and, and stuff are doing it. Um, what we wanted to do with the brain computer interface is, is build essentially for what they call the hardest use case first, is like, okay. Oh, right, you can back into other stuff, but exactly. if you start where you've got no no ability to move anything. Right, that's like, you can always move, move up from there, you know, in terms of the technology, but, um, um, you know, if we build it so it works for everyone, um, uh, you know, they, there's really, everyone has a different physical profile, right? But there's no such thing as accessibility needs. Um, except for as a failure of product design. Um, so I, I, I truly believe that everything should be accessible to everybody. Um, and you know, this is just a step along the way uh, towards that. Yeah, that, boy, you're being awfully profound. I'm not used uh -oh, to that. I'm, I'm, kind, sorry. I'm kind of rocked back thinking about what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've heard it spoken a lot of people say blind, but blind means like a thousand different things. The right. profile of, of low vision is completely continuous. And, and But you're talking about all of these accessibility needs are continuous. Yes, yeah, so absolutely. Maybe one guy can move his eyebrow and the woman can wiggle her ear, but if you can't do either one, then that's another level. Yep, I'd say, you know, if you've, if you've met one person, you've met one person, right, in terms of their needs. Uh, He's going profound again. <laughs> yeah, really. No, that, that's that's awesome. But it's totally true, right? I mean, we have to build to the specific needs of, um, you know, of the folks that we're, we're trying to address. And uh, over time, I hope that all of this will be integrated in just general consumer technology. Um, but, you know, for now, we'll sort of try to advance things as we can. So you must have brain scientist people at Cognition or we Cognition. Do. Are you one of them? I do, uh, so I'm a clinical speech language pathologist um, and I've been making these for a decade or so uh, 
uh, previously with a company called Toby Dynavox. I was the head of product, um, just eye tracking company. Uh, but we, yes, we have, so we have uh, biosignals engineers, what they would call essentially applied neurologists um, in a, our engineering's in Toronto. Um, so that's where the smart people are. Yeah. So this whole looking at the wave thing, it, how, how are you tapping into what the brain is doing if it's non-invasive? So there's, um, on the back of the device, uh, pressing against the skin, there's six dry uh, electrodes, so there's no gel or anything that's necessary. Um, it can go through hair? Yes. It, uh, now, with a caveat of thickness of hair, because it, it does, we can get about half an inch in or so. Um, you just crank it down on the back of my head? Is that what we're going to do here? Kind of, yeah. It's, uh, so there's like a ratchet system. Um, that disconnects these. Uh, so he's taking the uh, the helmet off of the uh, the. Am I allowed to say dummy? Yes. Head? The, the inanimate head. Our, <laughs> our, our, okay. our person. Should we name them? Yes. Um, name this one, Allison. Okay, <laughs> Allison. All right. There we Allison. go. Here's one. Thank you. Well, we our CEO the, uh, assistant is handing us one here. Yes, he was gonna correct me a little bit. We thought, right? Um, so just to give a sense of. Uh, sort of how this functions. There's a reflective lens. Um, it's on magnetically the attached there? Yep, you got it. Um, and so these are replaceable. That's kind of the part that we think, you know, might be uh, easier to make. Way. Yes, exactly. But then inside there's the screen. Um, there. And, and it's just going to look blank right now, which is kind of funny because black is transparent in uh, augmented reality. Um, so it, it doesn't look like there's anything going on. But if I put the lens back on, um, what we can do is, is get it set up and show you okay. how it works. Um, uh, part of the reason we use the lens too is when somebody composes something to speak, it also will throw it up and display it on the front. Um, so if it is a loud environment or people just want privacy. Oh, so I, I'm going to have this on and I'm going to figure out how to write hello and it's going to... And you'll see it. And it'll be displayed on the front of the uh, the glasses. Yes. Is this going to take a while? No. We, we uh -huh. got to, okay, we got time to do it. Okay. okay. Yep. Let's, let's do it. So what I will do is I'm going to... Um, yeah, crank this down on my head? Yes, indeed. Uh, I don't think my hair is too uh, thick. And we are, um, this one actually, I'll show you the, uh, there's the mechanism of interaction with this guy is head pointing. Um, so I'll, I'll show you how that works, just a, a little okay. bit. Okay. Um, okay. All ready? right. So We're putting we'll put it on my head on. here. Okay. And I'm going to just crank her down. Again, this ratchet. Okay, I see, I see some words, uh, green on the top, pink on the bottom. My brain is getting squished. No, you can go tighter than yeah, that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. Come on. Yeah, you got it. Okay, let's see. I yeah. want to make sure it's balanced. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Now, and both then, words are backwards. So I'm just going to hit a button here. It's going to do a three-second countdown. Okay. Um, it's writing something there. I can't read everything that's on screen. Okay. All right. And then if you look down, um, you'll see a bunch of sort of status indicators around. I see two uh, arcs of, of white. And they they have a little dash on either side. Yes, perfect. So okay. try try actually looking down, um, like with your whole head. Oh uh, oh, tilting the head down. Yeah, oh, there I you guess go. That's the right way to put okay. it. Okay, um, all right. So you can see sort of it's giving you status there of like is the brain computer interface connected? And okay. Then if you look up oh, to I the, see. Okay. The very top, there's a little house. Um, Everything's in reverse. Is it supposed to be? Alexa's backwards. History's backwards. My favorites is backwards. Oh. <laughs> Maybe he's pressing some buttons so on my we'll, head. Uh, cut, and, uh, <laughs> cut right to that. All, All right. right, we're gonna do this re recentering. Okay, one more time. it's still. Oh, now it says recentering in two. Now it's in forward. Perfect. Okay. All right. Oh, now I've got all kinds of data at the bottom. Yeah, this is way more interesting yeah. than it was before. <laughs> so we were doing uh, demonstrations, and uh, it okay. evidently it was the wrong setting. But Okay, so I see Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and an audio signal here. Perfect. So, yep, you have the ability also for, for privacy. People can turn that on and off. At, uh, all right. And then if you look um, sort of the same amount up. Okay, now I see the house. When you're looking at the house, maybe a little bit higher. Okay, I'm looking at the house. Oh, it just turned yellow. There we oh, go. I just went to home. Now I've got Alexa, I got history, my favorite. Okay, I want to type something. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna, no, no, no. Okay, I'm trying to get to the H. Holding yes, that it's steady. A, it's a working H, there we go. Okay, I'm going for the E. I got the E is turning yellow. So what I'm seeing is um, a little yellow line on the things I'm looking at. If I hold on it long enough, I get to the, uh, a full box around it. Oh, there I go. And is anything showing on screen, Steve? Uh, not, not yet. yet. So if you go down and there's a blue button with a play. Okay, I would have called that purple, but I'll do it. Does it say hello? Yes, it did. All right, I just, uh-oh, I just type hello now. 
I need to get to the delete key to get rid of that because uh, I'm a perfectionist here. Nope, I'm not getting any keys right now. Oh, there's the space. Oh, there we go. And now it wants me to decide which word I want. Hello. There we go. Alrighty. Yay, look at me go. I know. You that is really that interesting. Quick, yeah. You know? And that's one of the really nice things that we're trying to do is like for folks that are using like eye gaze communication systems, there's normally about a four hour set up and calibration process. And you can see this just kind of takes right off. Um, yeah. Yeah. I could see you could get into that. So the person who's locked in has to be able to move their head to be able to use this. So this one, it's funny because we actually weren't originally planning on making one that was just a head pointing or switch interface. But what we've had is a lot of folks with cerebral palsy that have come to us and, and wanted this solution um, because they have a little bit of head movement or can use head movement with a switch. Switch. Um, the brain computer interface is a slightly more limited interface um, because there's about you know eight ish interactive elements that we're able to support at once. Okay, so it's almost like eight bit. Yeah, yeah. So it basically, it'd be the idea of sort of looking at a quadrant of the screen and then kind of zooming in and then making a selection from there. Um, but we're one of the big pieces of my work is trying to get that to be as efficient as possible. So you can actually save fifty-seven thousand-ish things within three hits, three activations. Wow, um, that is crazy. It's cool because right now, brain computer interface in the laboratory environment, folks are only composing about half of word, a word a minute. Um, oh, wow. We're trying to get to thirty. That's the goal. We're getting Getting there. Yeah, so. yeah, this is this is fantastic. Well, Luke, this is really cool. If people want to learn more about cognition, where would they go? Yes, yeah, so cognition, which is C O G N I X I O N, cognition, um, and you know, dot com. Yes, dot com. And, and the idea is that there's a person, the eye is a person, and then talking to the other eye. So it kind of looks like a little person. Oh, it's very cute. Very cute. All right, this is uh, this is fascinating. I think people are probably, definitely going to want to come uh, go take a look at this. And I'm sure they're going to want to see how awesome I look wearing this helmet as well. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks absolutely. a lot. Thank you for your time. This is great. Oh, wait, wait, wait. One more question. If Steve hadn't cut it off, you said you have a tech podcast as well. What is your podcast? Yes, Talking with Tech, it's called. Talking yeah. with Tech with Luke Stewart. Very good. Give you a little plug there. Thank you.